Welcome to Barley and Hops. I'm George in my new comfortable chair. Yes. And if you're still with us, this is episode number eight of our Beginner's Guide to Distillery. Yep. And if you hung with us all the way up to this point, you're going to be well on. Because today we're going to talk about making our first mash. And we're going to, instead of using just plain sugar, we're going to go straight to the corn. You need to know this. One drop will make a rabbit whip a bulldog. Taste will make a rat whip a wild hog. Make a mouse bite on Okay, dog. now. Yes, well, now that we're back, um, we, we, gosh, we love having you. You know, don't forget to, yeah, that's it. Subscribe, share us with your friends. You know, of course you can contact me. Now, this happens all the time. Uh, there's really, really, no matter how many times I can do this, there's always that misunderstanding about making a corn mash. And I just want to share it with you because it's real simple. We're, we've got five pounds of corn here, and I've got about four gallons of water. I've got my little colander. Now, there are a thousand ways to do what I am about to do. The, this is, in my opinion, the most direct method. Uh, works for me, should work for you, but then again, I hear it all the time, Georgia did exactly what you did and it didn't work, and I have to stop, scratch my head and think, well, obviously you didn't do everything I did because I do it in front of you and it works. So just follow along, it's really not that complicated. Oh, So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a corn mash and then we're going to augment that with sugar to bring up the alcohol content. Because at the end of the day, we can do this with 100% corn, no added sugar whatsoever. I just need a larger pot to do that in. So I'm going to make a five-gallon batch, eh, maybe six. See, we're not going to be focused on volumes as much. Because uh, we're looking right now at process. How do we convert? Because you know that flake corn is nothing more than starch. You know, it's been uh, steam pressed and rolled, so it's nothing more than starch and corn flavor. So we're going to extract all of that, then we're going to convert all of that to fermentable sugars. Then we're going to, i got to show you the most important part that everybody forgets, sparging. Yeah, well, we've got to look, we've got our own vocabulary. Rinsing, when I say sparge, that's another term for rinse. It's just one of those things that happens to be in the brewing community. So let's just start using friends. Okay, so we're going to go through the rinsing of the cereal grain as well. Now, you have, uh, here, here are the options. In order to convert starch into fermentable sugar, you only need one thing. There's one thing and one thing only. And that's an enzyme to convert it. Uh, and it doesn't, you can't see it happening, but you'll see the results of it. It's called alpha amylase, and it's resident in all grains, uh, especially during the germination process, because it's that enzyme that converts the starch in the seed to fermentable, well, fermentable sugar at that point, but to sugars, because uh, sugar is the fuel base for all life, you know, it's, so it allows the seed to grow, the seedling, and does all those things. So that's what that enzyme does. Well, in two row barley, or six row barley. There's enough amylase to convert itself, whatever's left because most of it's already sugars, but there's enough to convert itself and something else, which that's why this is always added to normally to a recipe with this. But can we do it without this? Absolutely. But what do we need? We still need, huh? Yep, you've been paying attention. Amylase. That amylase enzyme can come in a form like this, <laughs> in a small container. It only takes a third teaspoon for a gallon. So there's quite a bit in here. And it does exactly the same thing as this. Now, what's the ratio? Oh, gosh, in, in, a, in a five to six pound, or oh, oh, up to about eight pounds of a cereal grain that needs some help converting, it'll take about two pounds of two row or six row, two, two and a half pounds. It doesn't take a whole lot. Yeah, there's a lot of enzymes left over and people get, oh gosh, they get stuck. They get stuck on it. 
uh, do I need to use green and um, well no because Amelie's is already here you, one or the other come on Bubba <laughs> you know make your mind up can you use both absolutely do you need to no 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 okay now there is another form of amylase known as a beta amylase a beta amylase is sold under the brand name of gluco gluco amylase uh, and that's because it's a derivative it's um Beta amylase is also resident in the grain, and it becomes active and does its job at fermentation temperature. So we don't have to worry about that at this point. All we want to do is get this converted. I know, George, you're wasting time. Gosh, let's get to it, okay? Here's what I have done. I've taken my pH meter, and I've dropped the pH of my water down to about, oh, about 4.5, 4.6, uh, because I know that once I introduce this, It'll rise a little bit, and then we'll check it again later. Don't worry about it. We'll get it right. Um, but I do need an acidic environment for all of this to take place, or to at least help it take place. My use. Now, this thing here holds 30 quarts. Uh, a good five, a little over five gallons. We're not gonna, I've got four gallons of water in here. What's that? Uh, four, four, about 16 liters. Somewhere in the neighborhood. Okay. Uh, four times four, 16. No, probably about 14 liters. So that's what I got in here. And I've already got it nice and warm. It's probably about 150 degrees. We're going to bring it up. Um, I'm going to use this colander. And the reason I'm going to use the colander is because I like keeping the grain separated from the water, if at all possible. So that, look, you got to strain it out anyway. Once we've extracted everything from this corn, the whatever's remaining is no good to you. So remember, you gotta you've got to strain it before it goes in the still anyway, right? Huh. I prefer it. I prefer to ferment off the grain. So that means I'll strain everything out of it, and I'll use a clear liquid or whatever color the liquid is. I'll use the liquid, and I'll ferment that because that's where all my sugars are. They're not in my grain. It, no matter how much grain you put in, additional grain you put in there, all it's doing is soaking up water. It's not really doing you any good. So it's just my way of doing it, okay? Again, remember, a thousand ways. I do it off the grain because it's just, to me, it's so much easier, cleaner, and quicker. Now, what I'll do is I've got this bag. It just, it's like a muslin bag, you know. It's got a whole bunch of holes in it. Um, I'm just going to put all the grain in this bag and set it inside this colander because it makes it easy for me to remove them if necessary, okay? Now, if you happen to have one of these or something similar to this, okay, and there's a bunch of ways to do it, I fashioned some of these hooks. And what these hooks are for, I got three of them. I made three of them, okay? And I'm going to show you this. What these are for is so that when... My grain is ready. My corn is in here and it's ready and I'm finished cooking. Huh? And I'm finished converting. What I want to do is I want to strain it. Rinse. Sparge. So I'm going to place these hooks around the side that will lift this up and hold it there. You see, they're simple. You just, all you do is just hook them. I've got three. Three does just fine. And I got one here just a little bit too low. There it is. See, so it sits right there. And then that way, now, a lot of the water that's in here, four gallons, it comes up to about here. So I'm above that. But a lot of that water is going to be gone because it's going to be sucked up in those grains. What do I want to do? I want to use warm water and just pour over it. It's called sparging, rinsing. I'm rinsing all those fermentable sugars back out of those grains, back down into the pot. Whew. See, that's the part most people forget. So, you know, I get the phone call. George, I, it's really, really thick. And no matter how thin I make it, I just can't get my hydrometer to, to bob. Yeah, you forgot to rinse the grains. Hmm. That's why it makes it so much easier to strain the grains out. Okay, 
let's move on. So, this pot actually, this colander actually has a standoff on the bottom. You'll see it's about two inches. So what that allows me to do is to turn the heat up on this without scorching any of these grains. You may have one and just be cautious. If it's too thick, um, your amount of corn versus your water. And the proper mixture they say, and I hate using the term they, but uh, I hear that a lot too. Uh, the, the, the proper mixture is about two pounds per gallon. Uh, but I'd be say I'd, I'd, I feel more comfortable with a, about a pound and a half per gallon because uh, it gives you a little bit more liquid room so it's not so bulky because uh, if it sits on the bottom and that's where the heat's being introduced it, it'll start to burn and scorch and it leaves a nasty taste. Let's move on. Simply all I have to do now since I've already adjusted my pH is introduce some corn and then I'm going to bring that up to about, oh, about 190 degrees. I don't need it to be at a boil. I can bring it to a boil if I want to. Totally up to you. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I'm not activating anything. I'm hydrolyzing. I'm, I'm getting this corn as wet as possible, and hot water tends to do the trick because that's how you release all of those starches that are, it's starch laden, and you want to, you want to get those out of there so that you can do what to them? Convert, yes, okay. Oh, this is the easy process, and after this is the easiest process. Now remember, I'm gonna use no two row at all. Not on this one, because we're gonna do another video when we use just Two row. You can yes, you can do it with just two row grain. Now, why do people use combinations of grains in the first place? Well, different recipes require or call for different combinations and mixtures. Whether you're looking for a thick mouth feel, uh, you're looking for a crispier taste, uh, you're looking for an abundance of an aroma. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why there are different grains that go into, especially a beer. Um, you know, you can have a full-bodied beer, you can have a light-bodied beer. Um, there's just so many options. Um, pick one that you like. Don't worry about being disappointed. All right. All I need to do now, I only have to tie this off. I'll just lift this, set it inside. Let me take these hooks off of here for now. I'll put those back on there when the time comes. I know, I could have left them on there. And there we go. Now, the reason I left this untied was because of what I didn't want to have happen was I didn't want to have a big clump right there in the middle. So I'm going to use my paddle and stir it up. Star sand? Um, I could, but why? I, yeah, you could. Yeah, you can go ahead. If you want to sanitize everything, that's fine. We're going to be above 165 degrees for quite a while. Ah, anything we introduce, it's going to die. Okay? So what I'm going to do is just mix up that corn. And that corn will eventually become nice. Well, it is. It's becoming thick already. So this is all I want to do is just kind of get it all mixed up. And that corn will eventually turn into be like a porridge, uh, a light porridge, not, not something that's, you know, real thick. Uh, and then uh, that, what that amylase will do, that amylase will turn it into like a really, really thin soup. And that's how you'll know. Now, there's another way to find out. But we can do the iodine starch test, and we're going to do that. I'm putting my lid on. Now, friends and neighbors... I'm going to turn this on, and then I'm going to bring it up to temperature and let it go through its whole cooking phase, and I'll be back. 